Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Art 192 Digital Imaging with Adobe Photoshop for the spring semester 2022. Today, we're going to continue with lesson 12, and that um, consists of using uh, in Photoshop Camera Raw. We'll be using Camera Raw in conjunction with um, Photoshop to focus on some advanced color corrections um, that are outlined in the textbook. So um, what you see here on the screen is um, a before and after. Here's a start file to the left and the end file to the right. At this small size, you, size, you can't see a whole lot of changes, but um, after you do the exercise and you view it um, close up, you'll see that there are considerable changes that have been made. The most important one, though, is to um, adjust for the lighting. And that starts with um, uh, focusing on the white point and getting the whites, for example, the whites in her dress and the flower and that sort of thing, really, really white. And that at the same time will change some the coloration of her skin tones and then we'll do some refinement of that. Now, remember that if you have a camera raw image, um then when you double click from the um, bridge to open it up or from the less from a folder itself um, it will automatically open in camera raw again if you're wondering what nef stands for that's an icon digital image so i'm going to go ahead and double click on it and open it again it's opening it up Camera raw, and I'm going to move this image over a little bit. And I'm going to, you know, browse at the textbook here just to go down the highlights here to adjust what we need to do. We're going to start by adding or editing, I should say, as I said, the white balance. That's where it starts. So I'm going to go ahead and use the little eyedropper. And where it's whitest, or it should be whitest, is maybe right down here in the top of her dress. And already you can see a pronounced change. Um, I'm going to look down here. I like having the before and after settings. So um, I'm going to click here. No, I don't want to see that. You can toggle before and after here, but I actually like seeing them in the before and after split here. And this is going to be um, left right. There we go. Come on. Uh, I want to look right before and after split two. Let's go back here. There we go. That's the right one. There. So here's the before on the left, and here is the after on the right. So you can see already we've made some. Sort of changes to this. Next, we're going to go ahead and we're going to change the exposure, we're going to change the contrast, the clarity, a few things to dress it up a bit, um, make it even better than what it already is. So for the exposure, we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, bring it up a little bit so it's a little brighter, 0.3. And again, if you have trouble using the slider, go ahead and highlight the text in there and just put in 0.3 and hit the tab. Oh, no, yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go, point three. So again, you see, again, even a little bit more change. Let's go down to contrast. And again, these are some of the basic changes. So I'm going to go down to contrast right here. And we want to change that and make it plus 15. So what the contrast does is it takes and make, make sure that you have the lightest lights and the darkest darks maximums have good contrast. If you zero it out, you know, if we were to go back on this, notice how washed out the whole thing looks. Now, for artistic reasons, if that is your goal, then that's something that you should, um, there is a noise in the audio. Is it, is it persisting? Let me um, pause the recording for a moment. Oh, and the audio now it's gone? Okay, good. Okay, otherwise I was going to pause the recording and uh, 
might be that just that I'm kind of maxing out the RAM or the processor in my computer. So got that. Let's go ahead and jump to Clarity, and I'm going to get out of Camera Raw. So Clarity is down here. We're going to boost that a little bit. Again, if you're never sure of what to do, just slide it all the way to the left or slide it all the way to the, to the right. Now, again, if you want a nice, soft, um, blurry appearance to your photograph, then do that. Um, if you want it to be oversaturated and um, I mean, extreme contrast in here and sharpness, then do that. We just want to boost it a little bit. So I'm going to go up to 8. Okay. That's it. So we're ready to go over. So I want to open it, but I want to be able to come back to um, Camera Raw. If I just click open, it will open it in Photoshop and I'm done. But if I click here and I say open as an object, we covered this the other day. So open it in, in Photoshop, but in the layers panel, notice that we get the little icon that shows that this is an object, okay? It's a layer object. And that allows us, if we double click on the image, the little icon of that, it will jump back to um, the layers. Now, I want to be able to leave these settings as well. So the textbook does not tell you to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and I want to make a copy of this layer. I can drag it down like so. Come on. There we go. Turn the bottom layer off, and I can always come back to this, because eventually, in the final stages of this, we're going to actually um, rasterize it, and it'll no longer be um, <clears throat> uh, digital. I mean, it will be a digital image, but it will no longer be able to take us back to camera raw. So with this setting here, when we have um, uh, smart object, I can now bring up my adjustment layers. And I want to use levels. Okay. And it brings up here in the upper left hand corner uh, um, of our of the book here. What we can do is we can now make some adjustments. Now, one of the things that they want us to do, I rarely do this, is that if you want to calculate a more accurate Um, adjustment, then we can do that. So I'm going to go ahead here, and you'll notice at the very top, there's a significant gap between the lights and the rest of the tonal values. So I'm going to drag this over just a little bit. Now, again, if we really exaggerate it, notice how it really washes it out. But I just want just a little bit, and I'm not going to look at the book for this. I'm just going to look at the image itself. There we go. And then we're going to bring the midtones down to 0.9. Okay, so we have some pretty good work that we've done already here. The next thing we want to do is we're going to take it and let's see, they, well, they wanted 242. What do I have here? I have 241. So that's close enough. I'll go ahead and do what the book is doing. 242. There we go. So now what we're going to do, we want to take it back to camera raw and make some additional adjustments. And these are going to be um, in the color mixer. So to do that, as I said, if I double click here, it will take us back to camera raw. The final adjustments, as I mentioned, will um, require that we rasterize this. Now, hopefully this doesn't take too long to go over, and it doesn't. So let's come down here and let's look at, I'm going to close up the um, basic settings. We're happy with those. But I want to take some of the reds out of the um, here. So I'm going to open the color mixer. And then what I can do is we can, you know, adjust the hue saturation and um, brightness in here on um, those levels. But what they want us to do is we're going to use the sliders here. We're going to um, drop the reds down to minus two. These are subtle changes now. These are something with your own image. It would be um, true, if you're, you know, especially true when you're working on a final assignment 
retouching, restoring an image, and this would be a good example of that. We're going to reduce the oranges. Um, we're going to bring those down uh, minus 10. Uh, this particular film or camera that they used really um, makes her skin a bit too red, a little bit too orangish. In the magentas, all in the the red range here, we're going to reduce to minus three. Okay. So once we've made those adjustments, we can come over here. Now let's go and close the color mixer here. And what I want to do is I want to um, I already duplicated the layer. I know they they ask us to do that too. So let me come back over here. I'm looking at the book myself. Make sure that I don't forget any steps. I just want to click OK, and that will take us back over. And notice that I've already duplicated the layer. What if I want to adjust these settings as well? I might want to duplicate this layer as well, because what I want to do now is that I want to rasterize it. So to rasterize the layer, we select the layer. And we come up to layer. And what we're going to do is select rasterize. We want to rasterize the smart object. Okay. And you'll notice that little, um, little icon, the little image in the little right hand corner goes away. So with that done, we still have um, our adjustment layer up here for levels. We're going to start to take this and we had to rasterize it in order to do some of the next steps. Um, we're going to get rid of some of our blemishes first. And that's kind of a tricky thing, um, namely because, um, you know, you don't want to get rid of all of them. It looks a bit bizarre when you do that. So here, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. There we go. We want to zoom in quite a bit. But um, we're going to start by coming over here and we're going to use spot healing brush you might have to adjust the size a little bit and to do that it's easiest if you go ahead and you use the right bracket or left bracket um, which is to the right of your p key so let's go ahead and get rid of this oh let's get rid of her nose in here um we can get rid of a couple more blemishes maybe one on her nose here we're going to leave the ones down here on our neck and most of the ones on her, um, her cheek. Let me get rid of some of them. Okay, and notice how my computer is really slowing down. But we're going to leave some of these over here too. Okay, so now that we've gotten rid of those, um, okay, let's see what we do here. Um, what we need to do now is we're going to use a brush size and um, we're going to work with a brush, and we're going to use, um, what are we going to do? I want to, um, we've got the healing brush done, and they asked for a specific size setting. I really kind of ignore that. Um, what else are we going to do? You can just, you know, fiddle with that if you like. The next thing we're going to do is the, the do use the dodge and burn tools. The dodge tool over here is hidden underneath this little finger. And that's a smud. No, nope, my mistake. Here we, it's under the, uh, the one with a little uh, sponge, sponge tool. I want a dodge tool. <clears throat> and the dodge tool, we're going to lighten some areas here. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the brush size here is maybe change that a little bit smaller. We're going to make it maybe 30, 35 pixels. a bit larger. There we go. And the hardness, we want to be zero. So we have a nice soft brush. And what we'll be doing initially here, and also the flow, we want to make sure it's turned down. I have it um, turned way down to um, exposure is. Uh, we want to make sure that it's set to saturate. So let's make sure that we have that. Um, and I want um, hold down here. 
So let's change that. Okay. And we want to make sure that um, highlights are suggested. So um, hold on here. Uh, actually, I misspoke. I was telling you what was what we we're using for the um, the healing brush, and I want to jump over here now to the. Um, the use of the, the dodge and sponge tools, and I'm not making any sense here. I went 35, zero for hardness. Um, mode should be in saturate. Why isn't this showing up? Oh, because we're using sponge tool. Never mind. So let me switch, and then we're going to use the um, the dodge tool next. So let me start with the, the sponge tool. So I'm going to switch back over. I, I'm just, it's easiest if I just do the save order of the book. So there we go. So the flow is set to 50%. We're making sure that it's set to saturate. Um, we have 35% as a brush size, which is good. And I said, um, hardness, we want to be set to zero. So let's take that down so it's nice and soft. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go and we want to enhance the color of her eyes just a little bit. So I'm going to go inside the um, iris here and make her eyes just a little bit bluer. Okay. We don't want to overdo it. We just want to enhance it just a little bit. Okay, so the next step, once we've done that to our eyes, is that we're going to switch. Now we're going to switch to the dodge and burn tool. So I'm going to switch over. And again, they're hidden under here, underneath the sponge. I want it to be the dodge tool. And I want it to be a fairly large brush. So I'm going to switch now and go up to 70 pixels. Because what we're going to do is we're going to clean up the sclera and the whites of her eyes. And we're going to highlight and lighten her brow a little bit. So let me change the pixel size, as I said, to 70. Approximate. That's good. Oh, so 65 is fine. And then we want to change the, um, the flow to really, yeah, 10%. So the exposure is really small. Okay. Now, we can go ahead and we can, if you want to, you can desaturate color. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over her brow just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and just, just lightly touch that. Okay. So it, um, underneath her brow, um, so that highlights it just a little bit. And if you don't like it, undo it a couple of steps and then do it again. Okay. That's probably enough. And again, that exposure is set to 10%. Now I'm working with a mouse, so it's a little bit more difficult to control. Um, the next thing that we want to do is we want to come back in here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller. As I said, we're going to go ahead and desaturate. Or actually um, lighten up the sclera of her eyes a little bit. So I'm going to go back here. And over here. Just a little. Okay. I may have overdone it a little bit, but we're okay, I think, for um, ourselves. Um, the next step, now that we've highlighted her brow and we've um, whitened her eyes a little bit and deepened the color of her, her iris, um, what we can do is we can go ahead and we can adjust the skin tone a little bit, a little bit further. So I'm going to zoom out. And what I want to do here is I want to go to um, to go to select right here. OK, and what I want to do is I want to select and mask. But hold on here. Um, I want to um, select a detect. Oh, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Um, 
I want color range is what I want. Sorry, there we go. I'm just drawing a blank today for things that I've already gone over. And I want to make sure that I want to um, make sure that it detects faces. And we're going to change the fuzziness quality to about 40 or 10 here. And the range is going to be, again, I need to look at the book and make sure that I've got it the same as what they have. Um, I guess they only change the, the, um, the fuzziness a little bit. It's going to include some of the hair, but I want to be the majority of the faces where this is going to be applied. So there we go. Okay, I'm just checking to make sure. So let's go ahead and click, and we're going to go get a selection. And if my image is wrong, it's wrong, and it looks incorrect. So I'm going to go back and let's try it again. I'm going to deselect, undo, deselect. So I'm going to preview this and pre preview the, the selection changes. So I'm going to go to select, and I want to go to color range. Let's do this again. Okay. I want to decrease the fuzziness, make sure that it's 10. And let's look at the image itself. Okay, let's go back here. Now what I can do is I can click in here and I can increase some of the areas. So, and I really want to focus on her skin. So I want to increase some of that. And this will look a little bit better, I think, now. Okay, so we'll go ahead and click sample, select the sample colors that's taken from here. If you want to add, if you want to add even more, you can click here, you can add in here. If you want to subtract, use the little eyedropper to the right. So if I want to take some of these colors out, I can. So let me go back again. I'm going to reset everything. Let's go ahead and click. Let's click in here for face tones. There we go. And let's go ahead and add a little bit in here. Let's add a little bit in here. Let's add a little bit in here. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So now I have a selection and what I want to do next, it's not quite the same as theirs, but what I want to do is what we're going to do is we're going to select um, under adjustments. We're going to use curves. And what I want to do is I want to drop it down just a little bit. Now, if I go overboard, notice what it's doing. Okay, it's only affecting the areas that I selected now they don't give us a specific number in here to choose but what we want to do is you want to pick from the middle of it and we want to move it down just a little bit again down just a tad i think that looks pretty good okay so now that we've got that done we're going to come back here and we're going to apply what is called a surface blur to this. So I'm going to go ahead and I've selected that. I'm going to come back and select our image. And notice that when I applied the, the, um, <clears throat> the adjustment layer, the last one that I used, when I used um, uh, curves, that it created, when I had that selection made, it actually um, applied a layer mask to that. So now let's go back to properties. Let's come back to our image here. And what I want to do, apply to the whole thing. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply this on a new layer. Now, they don't tell us to do that. Okay. But what I would like to do is I would like to make a copy of this first. So I'm going to go ahead and copy again. So I can always go back to it. Turn this one off, and we've got a new layer here. And what I want to do now is we're going to apply surface blur to this new layer. <clears throat> if I want, I can go ahead and I can create <clears throat> a new layer on top of this. 
And I'm going to go ahead and say, with this one selected, but it should be applied to this layer. Let me go ahead and try this. I'm going to go filter, and I'm going to go to blur. I want surface blur shape. That's down at the bottom here. So instead of that, I'm just going to go back to our original, because I can always go back to this layer that I made a copy of. I'm going to go to um, filter, and I want to go to blur. And I'm going to select surface blur. Okay. So with that selected, we're going to go ahead and we want to select um, a radius um, of five pixels and a threshold of 10, and we're good to go. And you can see that it blurs the whole thing here. It's blurring the entire image. And what we essentially want to do is we want to soften the skin tones a little bit. And it's probably a little bit too much. So what we need to do then is we need to go back and I need to change the uh, um, eraser tool to erase some of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the surface blur layers. Wait a minute, I blew it. I blew it, I blew it, I blew it. Let me undo that. So surface blur is done. I'm going to select the new layer. That's what I wanted to do at the beginning. So I'm going to go back here. And on here, on this layer, now I'm going to select surface blur. Because I want to be able to dial it back. If I try to erase from this layer, it won't work. There we go. Okay, let me try this again. Um, let's go ahead again. Then I selected it. So let me try again. Um, I'm doing it incorrectly, I think. So uh, I should just do it the way I do it. Let's go to blur. Try surface blur again. Okay, I've got the settings that I need. And now what I want to do is I want to select <clears throat> with this the eraser tool. Because I want to take some of that blurriness away and I want to focus maybe if we zoom in on her dress and take some of that away, we can do that. So I'm going to come down here and also around her eyes and that sort of thing. So let's come with the eraser tool. Okay, that's this one right here, about midway down our toolbar. And what we wanna do is we wanna select um, 50 pixels. That's what I have. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hardness. I want to be, let's go ahead and select in here. Yeah, hardness, it's not allowing me. I've got 50 pixels. Um, it's 10% hardness. Mode is brush. Yeah, we've got that. Opacity, it's going to go all the way down to, we're going to go down to 90%. I probably want that. I'm going to go all the way down to 80%. You can change the flow a bit as well. I don't want it to be, you know, 100%. Okay. Now let's see if we can't take some of the blurriness away. Um, again, I think I have, a, I would change the brush settings in here. Let's see if I can't zoom in and do that without goofing this up. So let's move around for I. Let's, no, see, that's wrong. So I want to do that. I, I messed up and I don't know how I messed up um, because I just want to uh, let me think for a minute. Let me go ahead and pause the recording. Recording. So my intuition was correct the first time not to put it on a separate layer, but to go ahead and make a copy of it. And then we're going to dial that layer back. So with this one selected, we're going to go ahead. This is the blur layer. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go up to filter. And I'm going to go to blur and I'm going to go to surface blur. <clears throat> and I want to make sure that I have all the settings here accurate. We want um, 
threshold to be radius five, threshold 10, it applies a blur to everything on that new layer. But then what we wanna do is we wanna dial back on this newer layer. So we're gonna actually combine these two layers. And this is what I would do. Um, again, it, it's difficult for me when I'm talking to you and I'm trying to look at the book at the same time. And I should just kind of go and do it the way I would do it. And nine times out of 10, it's the same as with what they do. So, but I'm gonna go ahead here and let's go ahead here under the opacity and dial it back to 40%. Okay. And now we can take the eraser tool. And on this layer, we can come back and I can go ahead and I can get rid of all of that on this particular layer, this top layer. And here in her eyes, if you wanna go over some of her, um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and include that, and make this a little bit larger. If you want Christmas, in her dress, you can do that. If you want Christmas in her hair, you can do that. So I'm just erasing. And if I were to go ahead here and I were to turn off the layer beneath it, don't crash, please don't crash, don't crash. Oh, 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 did I turn that back on? No, I did. Okay. And now I'm waiting for it. There we go. So let's turn this layer off. Notice how I've erased all of this. Now, <clears throat> so I haven't erased everything. Okay, so I want to turn that layer off, this one on. And you can see that I've erased the whole, erased the whole chunk of it. With just this layer, I can come back and I can erase even more. Because I want her dress to be crisp. I don't want it to be blurred. <clears throat> Notice that I missed part of her eyes. So let's go back here and make sure that they're nice and crisp. You don't want them to be blurry. If you want to go over the hair, you can. I don't think it's necessary. Let's turn the back layer back on. And again, this is something that you won't see on my screen, but um, when you zoom in and look really, really carefully at it, um, if I turn off the blurred layer, you'll see that her pores are a little bit more pronounced um, in the original one. But when we turn the blur layer back on, it softens them a little bit. If you want to crisp up you know, the bridge of her nose, you could do that a little bit two so that wouldn't hurt let me go ahead and make the brush a little bit smaller <clears throat> and crisp that up just a little bit there we go and again they're very subtle changes and only when you print it or when you zoom in and you see it a little bit more clearly will you know what you've done okay so that's taking camera raw image, bringing it in, or a digital negative, I should say, I can't, yeah, camera raw, and bringing it into um, camera raw, and then um, making some basic adjustments, taking it as a smart object into Photoshop, again, making some adjustments on it, and then bringing it back to camera raw, or back to Photoshop, or back to, uh, I'm getting lost to my words here. Let's go ahead. We start with a camera raw image. We bring it back into camera. We bring it in, open it up into camera raw <clears throat> with our digital negative, and we make some basic adjustments. After that, we um, open it up in Photoshop, but as a smart object so that it, we can always take it back to camera raw. The next step then is to go ahead and to um, make uh, an adjustment layer on it. And then what we can do to, to clean it up even a little bit more, make it a little bit nicer. Then what we're going to do is we can go back over to um, Camera Raw once again and fine tune it further with maybe some skin tone adjustments 
bring it back over to Photoshop, okay, when we're done. And then what we have to do to make the further changes is, you know, like removing some of the blemishes of her skin and changing the coloration of her, um, her irises and highlight areas on her brow and that sort of thing. Then what we have to do is we have to rasterize it. So once that's rasterized, the next steps, once the, those are done, is that we want to soften the, her face just a little bit more. So we make a copy of that, that layer. And then we begin to erase the areas that we want to remain crisp, namely her eyes, maybe her dress. If there are other areas that you want to be really crisp, but typically um, the viewer's eyes focus on the eyes and the basic features of the face. So that's what you want. And then after that, so that it doesn't dominate, we go ahead and if we, after we erase those areas, we dial back the opacity of that layer to 40%. Because if you crank it up, it will really be, um, even with the areas you know, taken out, let me zoom in one more time so you can see if I take that layer, the opacity of it, and I bring it all the way up to 100%, it really, really softens it a bit too much. It looks over retouched, and you don't want that at any time. So by copying the layer, putting it on, you know, a separate, you know, the layer on a separate layer, it allows us now to adjust the opacity of it and to allow only certain aspects of it to come through and to hide others. So that's what we're doing, combining those two layers. Okie doke. Kind of a short session today. Um, any questions about Camera Raw? No. So um, beginning on Wednesday, since we have completed all of our um, lessons in the textbook, we will begin watching um, tutorials from lynda.com on how to retouch, restore images. And this is kind of a first step into that sort of thing. Um, that's what we're doing to this image. And if you wanna go back and we wanna make further changes to this, we can, we can always go back here. If I want to, for example, remove the blemish here, we could do that. So let me switch to that. And it's gone. And if I go back up here, we can make sure that that is gone there too. So leave some blemishes, remove some of the, most of the ones that are on her face. Leave others. But then we're set to go. You can always go back and make changes. I can always go back here to the start file. Notice that because it is a, um, a smart object, I can always take this back to um, camera raw. Okay. But we've made, made some nice changes. Look, as far as I'm concerned, the lighting is the most important part of it to correct and make sure that that's good. The rest of it um, is really entirely up to you. Also, when we go to um, this uh, Wednesday, when we switch to uh, watching some of the, the tutorials on retouching and restoring photographs and lynda.com, know that there is a whole series of tutorials that you can watch if you develop your own, have your own account now on retouching, restoring, and um, dealing with wedding photographs. There's a whole you know, bunch of different tutorials on that on portraiture and you, you name it, you know, making good photographs even better in Photoshop. Okay, so that's pretty much it for today. Um, I'm done unless you have questions. No? Okay, well, then that's it. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. I'm going to say goodbye. I'll stop sharing and then we are done for today and I'll have this posted within the hour. Okay. Okie doke. Bye bye.